Comedy Theatre Presents The Discussions Between an Atheist and a Priest Written by Bidretten A one-act comedy about the issues that most concern people everywhere in the world Characters Clergyman An old man Atheist A male patient over 40 to 50 years of age In it's a person play, there is no set There is only a coffin in the middle of the stage If possible, light play should be emphasized during the performance. When the curtain opens, there is a coffin in the center of the stage. The spotlight illuminates only this coffin. The atheist lies motionless in the coffin. A clergyman with a cassock on his back and a prayer book in his hand comes out of the darkness. He kneels and prays fervently. Oh God, who has built castles in the minds of his servants? O oh, our Lord, who sent us into the world for a trial, bring our souls to the land of beauty, and do not let us down on the day of reckoning. Do not disgrace us at the time when all secrets will be revealed, and nothing will remain hidden. Hear this voice rising from my soul in prayer and supplication, in total surrender. Forgive the sins of this servant who you have taken into your presence. Take him to heaven. Do this for my sake. The atheist lying in the coffin suddenly stands up and sits down in the coffin. Ah, will there be no peace and comfort for people on their deathbed? Will these priests frighten people even as they send them to the grave? Will they follow him with such threats until his last breath? Cleric, angrily. What? Still insulting? You are not afraid of hell. Are you at least not afraid of the torment of the grave? Do you know what awaits those who do not believe in God in the grave? The apples squeeze their bodies like a vice, so that they'll not be able to move even when they are in the greatest pain. A demon will rise from the earth and beat them with fiery chains. Their graves will be filled with fire even before they enter hell. A serpent will sting them day and night. Scorpions will bite them with their poisonous fangs. Imagine how frightening the scene in the grave will be. This is what will happen if you do not believe. So only the light of religion can guide you in this darkness. We know, we know. We have heard a lot about this. Cleric. I was brought here by your wife and children because you insulted God behind your mother-in-law's back when she called you to pray. You told your wife that you had renounced your faith after living your life as a believer and you denied your religion in front of your children. Is this true, traitor? It is true. And as if that weren't enough, you made a secret will and gave away all your possessions to people who never displeased you. And now your wife and children are worried sick. Is that right? Ungrateful! That is right. When the doctor told you that you had less than 24 hours to live, you went out and bought yourself a coffin. Then you got into that coffin and waited to die. So you see... Then it is my duty to send you to the afterlife in a religious manner. Now, listen to me. Cleric opens the book in his hand in a pompous manner, as if reading a poem, as if dancing. Here is the time of death, O oh, traveller to the other world. Be brave, put aside your cares. Decide to save your soul for the new life that awaits you. Have no fear of death which will open the gates of paradise for you. Who says I am afraid? Cleric, with comical gestures. Oh, mortal, tell me, how will you meet death? As the blind greet the deaf. Silence! Cleric continues to read exaggeratedly from the book in his hand. I have waited for this moment. At last the moment I have longed for has come. But why am I in despair? Why can't I feel joy? Will you say that? Or, oh, the world had captured me. It was dear to me, alas. Now when death puts me on the throne, I lose a treasure. Because my defeat sits on that throne. Will you say this? Then think of your sins. Think of the torment you will suffer for them. And do not fear death. It comes to save you from your enemy. With death, a burden will be lifted from your back. Cleric, looking at the atheist. So, what do you think of the prayer? 
I thought it was a little funny. Then do not say that I did not warn you. If you don't repent of your unbelief, if you don't believe in God, if you don't devote your soul to the chanting of the name of God, with your last breath you will say, O oh Lord, I seek thy mercy for my blasphemy. Then you will die as an unclean person. When you are placed in the grave, two angels will come and question you. Depending on the result of this interrogation, your grave will become either a garden of paradise or a pit of hell. For as our great religious scholars say, the graves of the believers will be enlarged and filled with pleasant smells, while the graves of the unbelievers like you will be hit on the head with an iron hammer. They will scream so loud that everyone in hell will hear them except those in heaven. Cleric, looking at the atheist. How do you like that? All right, but aren't you making the already horrible death even more horrible with those words? What calmness! Atheist comes out of the coffin, lights a cigarette. How else could I be? People run, work, toil. When the moment of death comes, they suddenly remember what they have been through and are surprised. That's why most people always arrive at the threshold of death having run away from life. It is during their death that their life confronts them. Then death takes them out of one grave and puts them in another. Cleric. Amazing indeed. Atheist. And in order not to fear death, one must stand on the threshold of death and look at it. Cleric. And don't you ever wonder what awaits you, heretic? After death? Everything depends on how you live your life, Rabbi. Those who spend their lives creating hell in their minds will eventually fall into it. How do you know that? Because life is like a fire surrounding our home. In fact, we live in the flames of that fire, but we don't realize it. Death comes to put out that fire. What we take with us to the other side is what we can save from this fire that destroys everything. Whatever is left is what we will use to build our home after death. A strange thought, but I would like to know. How is it that a man who has been a believer all his life can become such a heretic as he approaches death? Tell me, who instilled these terrible ideas in you? Let me explain. When the doctors told me that I was seriously ill and going to die, I thought it would be useful to read the holy books. I wondered what we would face after death. What awaits us on the other side after reading them? I came to my senses. I had faith in God because I had never been a reader of the holy books, Father. It was then that I corrected my mistake. What a sacrilege! Don't you think about what will happen to you on the other side because of these insults? For some reason, the closer you get to death, the more rational you become. By the way, don't be fooled by the fact that I look so healthy. Yesterday I was in a coma. And this morning, I suddenly felt as if I had recovered from the disease. I've never felt better. The doctors say it's a sign of the beginning of the dying process. Death gives the dying a chance to say goodbye to life. Now, Reverend, tell me what you have to tell me. At this moment, I feel like someone who is going somewhere and is in a hurry. Then tell me, how did you become an atheist now, when you have believed in God all your life? Then tell me. How did you become an atheist now when you believed in God all your life? End of first episode. The play, the discussion between an atheist and a priest is based on the first chapter of Bedretton's novel, The New Divine Comedy. The New Divine Comedy, as divine as Dante's Divine Comedy, and as diabolical as Ghost Faust, is about the journey after death, and can be purchased as an ebook from all ebook sales sites. Subscribe to the Comedy Theatre Podcast to hear more episodes of Bedretton's Comedy Plays. Subscribe to the Comedy Theatre Podcast to hear more episodes of Bedretton's Comedy Plays.